Hey, what's up, guys? This is Hexplain here, Pascal Sack here for you. This is actually the beginning of a brand new playlist, and this playlist is going to be about all the how to's. And in today's episode, I want to show you how to find a vulnerability that you can search in, for example, a Bug Bunny program. Alright, let's jump straight into action. I do have my OS2 shop here. Now you guys know by now, but I want to show you something really cool today, which is the OS WSTG. And the WSTG is standing for the Web Security Testing Guide. And if we go to that page, you get actually redirected to a GitHub repository, but let's jump to OWASP's page. And if you guys out there are not familiar with OWASP, then we have to change that immediately. So if you're watching this video right now and you don't know what OWASP is, click on that little button up there, which brings you straight to the homepage of OWASP and just go over it. OWASP is just an absolute beast in the whole security realm and they give away so much information, really, really good information for free. There's so many people working on a lot of security related stuff and all that can help you on your hacking journey. So make sure to know what OWASP is and check out all the projects. And I'm pretty sure you've heard of the OWASP Top 10 before. And if you look closely, G-Shop. Exactly, that's the one we're using all the time. Anyway, today we're talking about the OWASP Web Security Testing Guide. And what I want to help you with is with a situation where you sit in front of a web application, whatever, one that you found on HackerOne, one that you found on Backcrowd, and you're like, huh, I don't really know what to search for. For example, you are super into cross-site scripting and you've tested all your cross-site scripting payloads across the web app, but you haven't found a vulnerability. So what to do next? And this is where the OWASP WSTG comes in handy. And you can go to the stable version of this paper or more or less guide right over here and there's a lot of stuff to read and I, I don't really think that you have to do that if you got the time read over all of it starting at zero going all the way down to let's see how long we have to scroll up all the way down to five but what I want to show you today is a different way of using this so for example you are sitting in front of OWASP Chew Shop and you're lost. You don't really know what to do, right? So you go to WSTG and click on any random link that you find there or something that pops into your eyes, something that interests you. For example, let's say testing for weak password change or reset functionalities. And this is where the WSTG comes in super handy. First of all, if you don't know what this means, there's always a little summary put down which gives you an idea of what the problem here is. And even better for you, if, if you've understood what the problem is and what to look out for, you do have an objective, a goal, what you are supposed to do, and you even get some advice on how to test it. And if you look at that, it, for example, says for both password change and password reset, it is important to check if users can change their passwords, if users can manipulate the password reset or change process, or if the password change or reset process is vulnerable to CSERF. So now you have an idea. Now you know if that is actually 
part of a web app or inside a web app, you've found a vulnerability and you can, for example, hand it in to the web apps bug bunny program or something like that. And yeah, so let's jump to OSP2 shop and let me see. So I'm, for example, logged in as test at hacksplain.com. And if I go to privacy and security, I see that there is a change password feature. And it asks me for my current password, for a new password, and I got to repeat that new password. So what do I have to do over here right now? And let's go back to our WSTG and we see test password reset. That's actually not what we're having right now. Uh, test password change, which is exactly what we were having. And it, over here it says, in addition to the previous test, so obviously we've got to read over that as well, but I will only jump or go into detail of that section right now. You also have to verify is the old password requested to complete the change so let's go back over here we see current password so apparently it seems like the old password is requested the most insecure scenario here is if the application permits a change of the password without requesting the current password indeed if an attacker is able to take control of a valid session they could easily change the victim's password okay so it looks like everything is good over here. And I, to be honest, have no idea at this point if this web app is vulnerable or not. But let's just try something out. Do not get the idea that if you see the current password field up here that the application is not vulnerable. You gotta try it out as well. So you could, for example, say, I leave this blank and say new password is whatever um let's say qwerty or something like that whoops i think i got it and apparently i cannot change it okay so there's a couple of things wrong they did not match let me do that again so now they match and i cannot change it okay so what if i put down an a that's interesting it was one letter which is still in here, although I clicked on change. Anyway, whenever you work with that, we obviously gotta use a proxy like Burp, our most favorite tool. And we see over here, which is actually kind of weird, that the password change was performed using a cat request. Anyway, we're sending this over to a repeater, and yeah, now we could try to work around for example this current parameter but I actually don't want to hack the web app in this video I wanted to give you a way an approach to search for a specific vulnerability category that you can test during for example a penetration test during a bug bounty program or whatever you come across if you don't have any ideas left, go to the WSTG, go to that page and work through every single item. So the testing starts with chapter four and it goes all the way down to chapter five. So work on all of those items and there is a really, really good chance that you will find the vulnerability. All right. This was it for today. I would absolutely appreciate if you would leave me a comment and let me know what you think, if this was helpful to you. And if you want me to go into any of those items in more detail to help you out finding all the bugs. All right, subscribe in the top right. See you again soon.